Mr. Preston, welcome to Biograph Days, Biograph Nights. And I know our viewers would love to know something about Wild Bill Wellman. Wild Bill Wellman. Well, he was wild when I first knew him, which was quite some, some years ago. It's it was going on 43 years ago now. But I had an inside track with Bill in a strange way because my father and Bill had gone to uh, uh, high school together in uh, Needham, Massachusetts, as far as Bill went. Uh, because all the stories we heard about him were really true. My dad confirmed them, that he did run away from high school and en enlisted in the uh, Lafayette Escadrille. And uh, to prove this further, all, all of his military exploits in that Escadrille were not apocryphal because on the Boges location, we were, uh, we were in a place called Buttercup Valley, almost to Arizona in California. And it looked like the Sahara. It was completely sand. And we used to get the cathard. We'd go crazy and we would go into uh, the little Mexican border towns at night for a little relaxation. And we were sitting at a table in a little bistro with uh, Gary Cooper, Ray Milland, Carol Nash, and uh, Billy Wellman. And some very threatening people were sitting right over there. And one of them, a big man in a leather jacket, got up and he came over to the table and we got all prepared for any kind of trouble. And uh, Bill looked at him and the fellow said, hey, he said, aren't you Bill Wellman? Yeah. Bill said, yes. And he said, I was your mechanic in World War I. And he reached inside of his pocket and he pulled out a picture of, of three and four of Bill's wrecks that this guy had put back together. And so we believed everything Bill said from there on until he started telling stories about us. But uh, he had sort of, he had sort of mellowed down a little bit when I knew him. Uh, arthritis was bothering him. He was constantly with uh, a little, a small little set of wets, uh, weights, keeping them going all the time so that he didn't tighten up the squeezing the ball. But uh, for a crazy man like this, he had a marvelous sympathy and understanding of the actor. It's the only way you could work with Gary Cooper. If you got the set upset, Gary would leave. He wanted no problems, no trouble. And uh, Bill could do that quite well. Anything else? Well, you know, this I didn't realize I knew that much about it. <laughs> the story goes uh, that in order to get into the uh, Lafayette Escadrille, that Wellman served six months in the French Foreign Legion. And I was wondering if you know, maybe how he, if he used that in filming Beaugest. Uh, well, it may well be. No, he first went into a, a, a sort of the drummer boy routine, you know, because he looked actually that young. And in the next year or so, I guess he aged quickly. Uh, but he was all shut up by the time we were in the war, and so his service days were over. And that, I guess that's when he started doing his research for Wings. Yeah. What was it like for a young actor like yourself uh, at the time to, to work with a, a seasoned kind of a pro like Gary Cooper? Well, the best thing that could happen to a, an actor as inexperienced and as young as I was, was to have those kinds of people around, to have a, a, a Brian Donlevy, a Gary Cooper, a J. Carroll Nash. They were, uh, I did my screen test with J. Carroll, and he treated me like a baby. It was just marvelous. And Bill the same way. They knew that if they upset me too much, I'd be up in the palm trees. But it was like like the first leading lady you had being Barbara Stanwyck, someone who takes care of you and is so unselfish. Uh, and I was lucky. So from then on, anyone that didn't behave exactly that way just suffered by comparison and I could handle it. Can you tell us a little bit, a little bit about uh, Victor Victoria, the new picture? Well, there's <clears throat> not a great deal I can tell you about it, except that <clears throat> I'm, I'm waiting it with great great excitement. We had such a marvelous time. The entire thing was shot in, in uh, Pinewood in London because uh, the sets had to be Paris, but they had to be Paris of 1935 and you can't get them. So uh, Blake Edwards built the entire city of Paris, the left bank, uh, on the Pinewood studios. We, we used every set at the studio except the 007 set. And uh, Julie Andrews is, is going to open eyes. People thought that she opened her eyes a little tiny bit in SOB, but wait till uh, Victor Victoria comes along. I'll tell you what I do. I make her into the world's greatest female impersonator. You just take it from there. I personally am a, a gay entertainer in a French 
bistro on the left bank. And if anyone can teach her how to be a female impersonator, we feel it's my character, Toddy. It's just a marvelous time. I think it's great, great fun. And uh, I'll be able to tell you more when I see it myself. I want to congratulate you on your award for SOB, the... Uh, oh, yes. That, the, uh, it's, critics. it's kind of a shame to get an award for having so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, thank you very much for, my pleasure. for your time. Call me back. Okay, we will. All right. <laughs> thank you.